These five are potentially problematic. A noble predator, he believes himself to be. This Garuk wild speaker, brutal savage, merely a merciless killer. His impatience is my virtue. Jace Beleren's greatest strength is his greatest flaw. A supremely powerful mind, incapable of perceiving how he could rule all. A keystone in an unfathomable plan. So utterly filled with power. So wholly lacking in restraint and vision. Seeking freedom. Will Chandra Nalar rise above personal retribution? Or will her fury consume all? A dark power commanding the dead. Liliana Vess inspires terror. In debt to demons, entranced in a pursuit of unattainable desires. As ruthless as myself. Reinforcer of life, light, and strength in allies. A contemptible blight. Should we cross again, I'll snuff a Johnny Goldmane spark, consigning him to an endless night. They're but obstacles, part of a grand design. Fight them endlessly, they'll likely prevail every time. However, should you prove to be a duelist of measure, having defeated these opponents with skill, consider your fate. For if you Destroying you shall be my pleasure. Okay, welcome to Monday's Let's Play, and this is Magic the Gathering, Jewels of Planeswalker 2013. It's a two-part video. Uh, first part will be basics. Um, if you've never played the game before, I'm going to do a quick tutorial over it, um, giving you the outright basics of the game. And then the second video will be the first battle. Um, I'm kind of I saw a noob. I've only started playing it. It's 2012, but on the Xbox really. But I got this version for the PC. It seems more outright to play opponents online using that system. Uh, anyway, hope you enjoy this video. I'm um, going we'll kick straight into it. Okay, hello, Magic the Gathering 2013. This video will be of the tutorial section of the game where we'll leave the ins and outs of the game and give you a gist of exactly what you've got to look out for um, in a basic game of cards. The multiverse. Countless realities with only one thing in common. All are infused with the five colours of mana the energy that fuels magic. You are a planeswalker, one in a million mages with the innate power to move across these planes of existence. Your gift drives you to explore, to discover new magic, to forge your destiny. In your journeys, you will be tested, most of all by others of your own kind. Shandala. Unlike most planes of existence, the vibrant and mana-rich Shandala drifts through the multiverse on an unpredictable path. Continue. Shandala. And it looks like I've got a couple of missions to do. Continue to unlock a new deck. And I'm a guy, so got a guy to face off right off the bat. There is a tutorial to do. Um, goes through the basics of how the game works. This is where it's going to divide. We'll have the tutorial and then we'll face Talrand. Okay? Welcome to Duels of the Planeswalkers. Planeswalkers, like you, are powerful mages 
who cast deadly spells and summoned fantastic creatures. Okay, welcome to Joe's the Planeswalker. This is your avatar. You battle against other planeswalkers for power and glory. And that's your opponent's avatar. It's your main character. In this tutorial, you will face off against the vampire planeswalker Sorin Markov. Yep, Sorin Markov is a vampire one, so he's got like dark cards. Um, he's gay, he, interesting so on, his game is played out over a series of turns. To begin the game, each player draws seven cards. Um, your deck is called your library. Each card in your library uh, represents the spells, creatures and resources you use in order to defeat your opponent. At the start of the game, you draw seven cards. So... You can zoom in on any card to learn more about it. Use the mouse to highlight cent Centaur Corsair in your hand, then use the mouse wheel to zoom in. There are several different types of cards in your deck. Centaur Corsair is a creature card. To summon creatures and cast other types of spells, you need mana. Magical energy you draw from the lands around you. The land cards in your deck produce this mana. Okay, so these land cards are these colour symbols. In this case, I need it says there to use any sort of way of spawning them, you need two land cards. This being a green card, you need two earth plant cards. They have to be that specific land to summon it. This type tells you what type of card it is. Of course, uh, you're supposed to of course, like Center and Warrior. Which is attacker. Rogue's text. If a card is a special ability, then we found here. You might also find player text telling you about the world and magic gathering. So that's just a sort of text there. Power and toughness. Not going into that as such yet. See how much um, damage in one turn is required to destroy the creature. It'll hit for three hits and it's got three HP. Um, we'll go more into that shortly. And we zoom out. The more lands you play, the more powerful spells you'll be able to cast. Sorin takes the first turn and plays a swamp. Right, so he's playing a land card. As you can see there. It's a basic first turn. Basic first turn to me. He gets a combat turn after that. But he's got no creatures on the play to combat with. He goes to the end. After each turn, um, you get a card. So that's an extra card I've got. For example, I've got loads of these plant cards. So I'll play one of these, and that's a land card. Because I'll need that, the more land cards I get out, the more I can tap into and use the power. Another swamp on his second turn. Now he's building up his, his power yeah. resource. Combat phase, 9 to attack with. After playing your second forest, you have enough mana to cast a creature spell, Rune Claw Bear. So I plant that one, and that gives an option to apply this card here. Because that one's going to take three, and this one's going to take seven. So this one's only going to take me when you one to spell, your call hands it. Your will automatically become tapped. Once they're tapped, they'll spin to the side and you won't be able to use them again until the end of your turn, then the land comes back to you. That's only, the land's only used um, to empower the beast if you're going to attack with or you're going to use them. Apart from that, the land will stay active. So the more land you've got, the more attacks you can do technically. On your next turn, 
be able to attack Sorin. He gets hibernation sickness after he's um, summoned, so he can't actually attack when um, summoned, so he's got to wait an extra turn. Sorin plays another swamp and ends his turn. What's he up to? A tactical. He's not cast any anything at all, but he's building up a good bit of swamps land cards, which means he might pull out a massive big attack card. Because you have two main phases in a turn, it's often a good idea to wait until after combat to cast spells. That way your opponent will know less about your plans during combat. A human monk. Hmm. This card's dangerous. I can't quite get it. It has got a special ability as well. So, um, I technically put another line card out. Do you want to let me? So attack it wouldn't let me put a card out, that was a bit weird. Anyway. <laughs> our creature attacks it once tapped, just like the land. If someone has a creature of his own, he can block the attack. In this case, he can't block the attack, so it's going to go straight damage. Two damage there. Um, you see it there. It's going to cause two damage there. Runeclaw Bear deals two damage to Sorin, reducing his life total to 18. Play your third forest now. Remember, you can only play one land a turn, no matter which main phase you play it in. If you're not sure what to do next, request a hint. No, it won't let me do anything. This hint suggests casting Centaur Corsa, a creature that costs three mana. Mm -hmm. Good idea. That's a good call. Brings it the second creature. Taps the mana. Sorin plays another swamp and casts his first creature, Ruthless Cullblade. He then casts Deathmark. Hmm, interesting. Well, let's look at this in a minute. As the swamp goes out. That's his card there. Zoom in there. Well, let's have a look at this. Ruthless Cold Blade. It gets a 2 plus, plus a plus 1, as long as the opponent has 10 life or less. So that means it's automatically that's going to happen. So he's got a plus 2 and a plus 1 on to the score he's ready to go. So technically he's got 4 by two, two hit points and four on attack because I've got more than ten points well unless it goes lower than that obviously it becomes weaker now as for the death mark death mark destroys your centaur corsa both cards are put into the graveyard Oh, can't look at death mark. I would like to look at death mark here. Death mark here. Let's zoom in. Death mark here. Destroys target green or white creature. So that's quite a, a distinctive one because it can destroy any creature. It's quite a vicious spell he's got there. I can take out any creature. Didn't green or white creature. So it's quite a dangerous card that one. A good move from Soren. The ruthless cull blade now stands in your way. Send the rune claw bear to attack Soren. 
No, I've got two hit points. If he attacks with double, then I could be history. But the tutorial is telling me to do this, so. Sorin chooses not to block the rune claw bear. He's down to 16 life. Good job. Of course, because he's got hibernation sickness, I didn't actually take that into account. So he wouldn't be able to attack right while he's just um he's just called out, so I'm give it advantage because of the hibernation sickness. After combat, play another forest and cast order of the sacred bear. Yeah, we're talking about this card. The card I was looking at earlier. It's a human monk. It's a basic card. Good damage though. Four by three. Yeah, by his four attack. Sorin sends his ruthless cull blade to attack you. You can block creatures that are attacking you with untapped creatures of your own. Block the attacking Ruthless Cullblade with Order of the Sacred Bell. Well, it's a tutorial, so we'll show you what this, ha what this happens. Oops. Look. That. Yeah, I know. Oh, block. 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 How does that continue? Ah, still don't know where the key was. No way. Block. Attacking and blocking creatures deal damage to each other. Creatures that are destroyed go to the graveyard, while surviving creatures remain on the battlefield. Order of the Sacred Bell is victorious, while Sorin's ruthless Cullblade is destroyed. Yeah, I, I must read the card actually, so after, after, if the guy's hit points are dead low, so technically he's only got one hit point, so. Instants are spells that can be cast at any time. Their flexibility gives them... Sorin is again defenceless, so attack him with both of your creatures. Target he gets plus at the end of each time. Well, I can do that, and that. Double attack. Sorin interrupts your attack by casting Last Gasp, hoping to send Order of the Sacred Bell to the graveyard. I was in to see it. Target creature gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. So it's quite a lethal card he's got there. strategic play. If a spell requires a target, you'll choose it when you cast the spell. Cast Giant Growth now. Mm. 
You were smart to save your giant growth until you needed it. Order of the Sacred Bell is saved and will deal four damage to Sorin. as well so quite a devastating character just by chance sometimes the cards come in your hand by chance but being a tutorial it's closer to happening here keep it up more lands mean more mana and more options throughout the game Sorin's not going down without a fight his infest eliminates your rune claw bear Another spell card, so a lot of spell cards he's got in his hand. All creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn, so immediately that's going to be enough to ice the rune call Blair, Blair, Bear, 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 <laughs> Bear, as was commented on. Because it's only got two hit points, so. But it weakens my other character. At least at the end of the turn. And then it goes back up in hit points. Like creatures, artifacts and enchantments also remain on the battlefield after you cast them. They represent powerful magical incantations and items. Example, they're using this weapon here as to the power of your character and increases can increase hit points and defense depending on what's going on. You can enhance one of your creatures using an aura, like Blanchewood Armor. Yeah. Enchant your Order of the Sacred Bell with Blanchewood Armor, making it gigantic. This we go, plus one, plus one for each forest you control. Now this means I've got one, two, three, four, five forests. That would be plus five and a plus five on hit points as well, so... It would be an incredible card to play at this point. By playing another forest, you'll maximise the bonus given by Blanchewood Armour. And that would multiply it to 10 by 9. Order of the Sacred Bell's power is now 10, meaning it deals 10 damage in combat. Sorin has 10 life. Time to end this duel. And this would just be a one-shot kill. Congratulations, you have defeated Sorin Markov. Further challenges await you in campaign mode. Good luck.